Welcome to episode 12, part one of Views from a Business Leader. In this episode, we talk to Paul Norbury, who is the CEO and founder of Cardwave. So good afternoon, Paul, and uh, thanks for your time today to sort of come and come and talk to us on Views from a, a Business Leader. Yeah, hi, good afternoon, Joe. Um, appreciate it. Would you mind just for the viewer's perspective, would you mind just uh, letting us know who you are and, and what you do and what Cardway does? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I'm the founder and the chief executive of Cardwave Services. Um, we're a world expert in flash memory technology and data security products. We've been in business for over 15 years. We're one of the pioneers of the services market when flash memory was first developed. We work predominantly with manufacturers supplying solid state memory and storage solutions. Our key market is automotive, but we also have customers in the media, consumer electronics, telecoms, um, internet things. Our office is based in Devices, um, and I also have a company in an office um, in North Texas um, in a nice little city called Plano. Okay, very good. Um, so I, I guess from you're, you're an international business, so um, and obviously we're, we're faced with very challenging times at the moment with the pandemic, and obviously it's a, it's a global pandemic. So how has business been for you, uh, sort of personally, and 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 the wider sort of um, business, I guess, uh, when you're you when you're doing business over, overseas. Well, that's a pretty open question, isn't it? Um, so the truth is that the business has been decimated. Um, we are heavily involved in the automotive market, and globally, that is just ground to a halt. So we were relatively busy at the start of the shutdown, but that was the orders that were left in the system. But I always predicted that by the middle of May, it would start to wind down. And we're at the point now where our, our factories, both in the US and in the UK, are pretty much closed. There's bits and pieces coming in, but nowhere near the level of business to sustain the staff that we had. Um, so from a trading point of view, um, it's it's gone quiet. Um, our customers who I talk to, they're, they're having exactly the same challenges that we are. Yeah. So everybody is being positive, but nobody knows what's going to happen. But from a strategic point of view, I suppose there's plenty of opportunity to think about your company, thinking about what you're trying to do. So I'm not unhappy about it. I'm not depressed about it. Um, yeah, we've got to go through it like everybody else has to go through it. But I'm finding um, the time um, kind of like in isolation to think more deeply about what the business is and what we should be doing and how we can be a better business when we come out of this. Yeah, I think I think that's um, it's interesting actually because I think some business owners, I guess, depend on the the business that you have. Yeah, uh, so some business owners feel that they are they can't plan because they're in it now and they're just running a business week to week. And, and others are sort of maybe stepping back a little bit and and having that sort of thinking time and being able to sort of maybe restructure or, or upskill or do, do things within their business that they wouldn't have had the time to do otherwise. Um, so I guess for you, it's it's, it's more the, the latter. Obviously, you're dealing with the now in terms of like the, the bits and pieces that you're, you're dealing with on a day to day basis. But it is that thinking, the strategic time that you're mostly focused on at the moment. I'm always thinking about making the business better and I've always got plans, I've always got ideas and I think that every business owner should have that. You know, um, I, I live in a world where um, things can change for us really, really quickly, but I'm, 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 I consider myself to be kind of like entrepreneurial in my thought process. So I'm always looking for opportunities and I'm always trying to make things better and never happy with, with, um, with what we've got. So. This, this pandemic and the whole point of sort of locking down, it's just a, another curveball to deal with. Yes, it's a much bigger curveball for some businesses. But to me, I'm thinking, OK, I've had worse. You know, I've, I've climbed bigger mountains before and I've, 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 I've been in the crap, you know, in many other places. So I'm not I'm not nervous about it because I suppose business owners have to develop a mental toughness um, and they have to be able to deal with whatever the situation is. So nobody's got any experience of dealing with this type of business but you call upon your skill and your your self-belief really that that you've got what it takes to pull yourself out of it so mm -hmm. yeah you should be thinking about your business you should be planning but i'm kind of hoping that if you're a business owner you should have had that in place anyway yeah yeah absolutely is the attitude do you think similar overseas 
to to that over here like you speak to other business owners as well as, as like I do and but you speak to uh, and do business internationally what, what's the sort of takeover in the US for instance compared to sort of over here about business in general and the economy yeah yeah well I I, um, I work with, with with manufacturers and partners customers you know Asia um, continental Europe and North America um, I like the American way of doing business. You know, I think as, as Brits, we tend to sort of sometimes give them a bit of a hard time, but they're positive. Their attitude is always um, a, a, a go getting attitude. And I think if you're a business owner, you don't really want to slow down and sort of just accept whatever comes your way. You always want to achieve the most for your business. So when I talk to people over there, it is one about, yeah, it's not a great time. But let's put our energy into being positive and what we can do with the situation. We, we get some of that in the UK, but I think in the UK, there's 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 a lot more negativity. Um, there's a lot more trying to score points and, you know, trying to blame somebody for the situation. And I'm sure that, you know, uh, obviously I, I heard it saying it's really quite an interesting comment, actually, that we're all in different boats, but we're all on the same storm. Um, so everybody has a different perception about that. But from a business point of view, people in continental Europe are very focused and motivated to, you know, grow their businesses again. And but the, co the companies that I work with, most of these are like million dollar, billion dollar businesses, global businesses. So they're kind of like waiting for their organizations to lead them. But but it's one about this is a temporary situation. We won't worry too much. Asia is slightly different. People over there, it's a much more emotional um, response that I get from people in Asia, mainly in Taiwan, who I um, work with quite, quite, quite a lot. It's much more about health and well-being, um, and I think they're a little bit scared of it. Um, but also in Taiwan, they've been relatively successful at keeping most of the virus out there, so they haven't really had to deal with the bad press and the, and the number of deaths that we've had to deal with. So, and I think when they read the international press, they're a little bit freaked out by that. Mm. Um, so, but it's an interesting time because we have business relationships with all these people, but I've always built my business on, on, on personal relationships as well. So it's, it's the time like this where, you know, I'm always in touch with these people anyway, but we're having much more meaningful friendship conversations everybody's looking out for each other motivating each other saying that you're there for each other and you're thinking of each other and your families and you're just checking in and we wouldn't normally have done that we would have been a little bit more too you know business like and probably just had it as cursory information rather than you know the meat and bones of the um, other conversation yeah no that's a good point i think networking and, and yeah your your own network is massively important at this point i think you, you touched on interestingly about the the positivity uh over in the, like the states and how they do business i think the government has come under criticism for various different elements of the pandemic how they've dealt with it from a from a health perspective and and nursing homes and all that we, we won't go into that this is Perspective, you know, actually, a lot of the uh, response that I've been speaking to other business leaders is actually they've, they've put some really good measures in place, and we could be in a, you know, a really tricky situation now if if they hadn't. And do, you know, do you think the the response has been pretty good uh, from the government in terms of uh, supporting businesses? No, absolutely, and I think they're going to get a bad rap regardless of what they say or do. Mm. Um, and and I've often thought, you know, if if I was the prime minister, you know, what would I do? But his role and all the other ministers that we listen to they're in exactly the same situation that we are as business leaders all right they're yes okay you know we we run businesses they run departments they run governments but they've been dealt with a curveball and and, and if i had a curveball coming into my business i'm not going to be polished and get everything right i'm not going to understand everything correctly the first time all right and when i say things i have the right to change my mind as, as i get new information available but from a business point of view i'm very sympathetic to them um, i don't think they've done anything particularly wrong yes with hindsight and hindsight's that wonderful word isn't it you could always go back and think you could have made a different point different you know emphasize it slightly differently but you know the truth of the matter is is that the government have looked at this and thought crikey this is this is this is a big curveball this is going to hit people quite hard you know we've we've been you know, I think, in my personal opinion, that we've been very clearly communicated with. I'm intelligent enough to um, make up, you know, using my own common sense, you know, the bits of the detail that maybe aren't there. All right. I'm not expecting to be spoon fed. 
um, but they've put in place the furlough scheme, which is a massive relief for a lot of businesses and my company are using that as well. Yeah. Um, and I think they're just basically saying, we're all in this together, let's all come together and let's all figure this out. So I think people that are trying to score points and journalists that are just deliberately trying to invoke a certain response, personally speaking, I don't think that's particularly helpful. No, absolutely. And um, what's, I guess, positive for businesses, there needs to be a little bit more detail around the furlough scheme because they're going to extend that now, aren't they, in terms yeah. of the, the furlough scheme. It would be interesting, enough, like the, the uh, initial things that are coming out, it's going to be 60% instead of 80%. So they're looking for businesses to sort of top up. Uh, well, the I way. like the part-time bit, actually. Yeah. You know, I kind of like wanted that earlier, if that was possible, because, you know, Again, my business is very different from from many other people's business. But when when the furlough scheme was first announced, it, it's either like you're all in or you're all out, mm. right? So if you have like a 50% contraction of your business, you might only need 50% of your staff, but then you might still have to pay them 100%. So you got to make the choice: you either cover that 50% or you just shut it down completely. Yeah. You know. So it, I would have liked that to have been brought forward because there are certain people that I can bring back on a more part-time basis now. But at the moment, I've got to make that decision of whether I take them back full time or I've just got to wait for August the 1st. Yeah.